All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be spectating some Rebirth quads, Iron Trials, and going over, well, basically just individual player mistakes that you guys are out there making. These tips, these important skills you guys need to learn, these important mistakes you guys need to stop doing will help you guys go out there to be a better Warzone player, not just with the current Warzone, but also with the future one. Not wasting any time at all. We're talking about Exo and what he's doing. Of course, we got a little bit of movement. Kind of spending a little too much time around uh, that gun for no reason. I'm sensing a little hesitation. All right, so right off the bat, just analyzing what he's doing. Doesn't seem like a bad player. He definitely has IQ when it comes to movement. But what I do witness is hesitation. He doesn't know where he needs to be going. He doesn't know if he wants a gun or not. We watched him literally just hover over that gun for a few seconds. Now, a lot of you guys might be like, Savage, it's not that big of a deal. But it is because those few seconds you guys are sitting there doing that, your teammate, aka Purple, had already pushed across the street. Um, you could get collapsed on. Those fine moments that you think are not a big deal is probably what costs you your life most of the time. We hear a stun grenade going back to our right hand side. Not really sure what's going on. And just judging by Exo, what I see again is a decent player. At least he's got the potential to be a decent player. Um, I've yet to see him to get in a gunfight, but he's just kind of following his teammates, going to purple, back to blue. Um, not really sure exactly what his goal is. Now, of course, we need to get our Lodi as fast as possible, but we do have guns that we could utilize to go out there and get some kills. If you guys ever watch me play Rebirth or any resurgence mode at all, I will always try my best to get my loadout, but if I have a gun like this, which is very usable, I will go ahead and try my best to get some kills with it to increase my kill count and then go back to loadout once my teammate has successfully dropped it. Um, in order to do that without screwing my teammates over, I'll drop my money and then I'll head off. Um, of course, this is resurgent, so we are definitely three stack. Purple's off doing his own thing. I'm not against that. I actually like to see players solo split and resurgence. All right, so right now, a huge mistake. We're going to be going in the house, going after the enemy we spotted in here. We've got a teammate down, another one about to be down, and uh, they're still alive ping over the right-hand side. So I really wish and I would like to see Exo make his way back to his squad um, to help them out because the guy, the guy in the building clearly does not want anything to do with this fight, and um, we could really be a crucial help to Pedo Tactico because he is a sliver of health from dying. All right, look, better late than never, but <laughs> never late is better. All right, so a lot of positions, I always like to tell you guys, you know, you want to practice your B-hop, practice your drop shotting, things like that. And I'm a huge fan of drop shot. If you guys watch my gameplay, you know I love drop shotting, but there are certain situations you don't do that. All right, let's rewind a little bit and talk about his aim because you can see that he's really not sure exactly what he needs to be doing um, in order to, to win gunfights. Now, the Marco isn't the greatest gun in the world, but it's definitely a very viable weapon, especially in Rebirth. But on top of that, we're playing Iron Trials. So what do you need to go for the most? Blues clues, headshots. Come on, man, what are you doing? Look at this. We instantly start shooting for the waist. I wonder if he's got the main bots. Um, but we, we keep going for it. And then when he tracks to the right, notice how he lowers it even more to go for the feet. Not really sure why, um, but there's a, definitely an issue with this tracking there for sure. And also, if we talk about how long this game's been going on for, we've been spectating this guy for roughly, I'd say about two minutes now, and this is his first gunfight. So I always encourage you guys to hot drop and go after kills and go after kills for many reasons, but definitely for practicing your aim, your accuracy, your tracking, reaction time, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and watch this. Now he's going for the kneecap, lowers to the feet. He tries to raise it back up a second, but the moment the enemy gives him a little bit of sidestepping, we're back to the feet. Not really sure why. Um, torso is definitely your better one if you're struggling with headshots. Always encourage going for the heady. But if you're struggling with that, go for at least upper torso. It's bigger, you know, center mass. It's bigger than everything else. Don't really understand the reason for the ankle shots. But, you know, the ankle bite of that we are, there we are. Now, here we are in a position. We are already cracked by the time we engage this guy. Do not engage this guy. Don't do it. You need to break away to the hallway to our left-hand side. Let's go ahead and a little rewind right here. This is exactly where you want to be at. You want to try to break the plane, break the line of sight from the enemy. That way, it forces him to do a few things. One, it forces the enemy to either A, back out of the fight entirely, run back up the stairs because he's a scared baby back bitch, or two, to push you. Now, when he pushes you, you do have a few seconds. You can pop a plate, maybe even if you get lucky, two plates. 
before he pushes you. You can either A, hold the angle on the door, basically sitting behind the wall, just kind of watching this just for a split second, or my personal favorite, rotate around the building. I always want to keep you guys moving, keep your feet moving at all times. I don't like holding angles, but certain situations, it might benefit. The fact that this Iron Trial is not a huge fan of the holding position, but it's still an option that you guys definitely have. Regardless, both are better than what we did, which was this. No. Bad EXO. And again, I got nothing against him. Dude, his, his his movement seemed, you know, he had auto tag sprint on, he was slide canceling. He's doing better than most. If I had to guess his KD, and you already see it, he's probably around a, a 1.5, maybe even a little bit towards the, the 2 KD level. And that's just basically solely on his movement. When it comes to aim, it's struggling big time. All right, moving on to Visco. And I also do want you guys to realize that we still have not gotten our loadout yet. At this moment in time, we do have $12,000. Your boy's trying to get the money from him. Finally, pot of SWAT, maybe. <laughs> I guess he wanted to do it himself. All right, I'm gonna assume his uh, controller has an issue or something. Guys, if you're looking for a controller that doesn't leave you stranded in the open, make sure you check out aim controllers. But guess what? Lifetime warranty on any modded parts, because the triggers, everything, man. Um, give it a try. Use code SAVAGE at checkout. Link will be in the description below, because your boy uh, Visco definitely needs himself an aim controller. All right, here we are with Pato SWAT. Look at the heartbeat breaking it out. We have one scan. No one's there. Not surprised. Don't really understand why we're camping next to the Lodi. Perfect example right here. So what you guys want to do is not sit next to the giant beam of red light that's emitting to the rest of the server because they will be coming for you, especially if they're aggressive and it looks less exactly what it is. So again, we need to be plating up. The enemy is definitely in a better position than we are because again, we have no plates. Here we are going prone to hide instead of plating, very questionable. There you go. Now, normally when I see a heartbeat in someone's inventory, no hate to you guys, I always expect this type of gameplay. We got lucky, but thankfully you popped those plates. Savage, it worked. Hey, everyone gets lucky now and, th now and then, okay? We have a footstep to our left-hand side, going for the execution. We need to just pick up his plates. This is a big mistake people don't understand when they're when they're fighting. They They don't realize what they need, and whenever it pops up, they don't go towards it, meaning we need plates. There's a satchel. I feel like it's common sense, but I, mm, probably not. So even though there's another enemy in here, again, dude, I want to get plates and get plated up because we are at a disadvantage. Said we go this way, enemy busts out the door, and oh, shit. Cooper's just absolutely shredding, but back behind our wall, we hide. Hopefully, Visco can come in and uh, help us out a little bit. Again, still needing plates too. We should probably grab that satchel if Visco has it. And if he did, definitely have him drop me some plates. Satchel's already gone. Now, judging by Pato Swatch's movement, I'm gonna say he's probably a low 1KD player. All right, so I hear footsteps right now. That's why I paused the video. We hear the enemy's footsteps. Now, two things I wanna talk about. One, just kind of briefly touched on teamwork. Purple should be telling you there's two guys. That way, once you get the execution and pick up the plates, it's the only reason why I'll forgive the execution. You can just dip out the door. However, I don't know if that's exactly what's gonna be happening right now. And the fact that Pato is actually banking to the left a little bit leads me to believe he's about to try to 180 on this dude and he's going to get shit on. Look at his health. So let's go ahead and continue real quick. There it is. Now, if he would have just kept forward running to the door, I would have paused it, we'd have had a different conversation. But again, I saw him turn to the left. I knew exactly what was about to happen. And it's unfortunate. Again, just making real-time decisions like that will help you guys get out there and be better players. I will say, despite all the negative comments I'm making about these guys, at least they're out here fighting. Gotta give them love there. It's, uh, it's not often in spectating resurgence in any map at all that we spectate players actually fighting. Usually there's heartbeat walls. Licking windows and doing a bunch of weird shit. All right, moving back to Pato. Uh, we have the zone coming in. We need to get out of here. We, I don't know what we're heartbeating for. 
We're already, bro, if you're curious, just go like this. Just peek it. It's it's amazing what your eyeballs can show you. I know, it's crazy. Um, But we know there's a player in here, so there's really no reason to heartbeat. We hear the footsteps, right? And her teammate just died to him. You know, he ended up going in there coughing. He went for the satchel play. I kind of respect that. Got to give him love there. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. Again, if the enemy's paying attention, we're gonna be in a very bad spot. Guys, above us on the rooftop. We just gotta plate up as we did. Plate as we did, bro. You may get shot, it's fine, not a big deal. He did it correctly and keep moving on. So right now, again, here we are heart beating. Not really sure why. The guy was on the rooftop when he shot at us. There might be another guy over here, probably is. Again, whoever shot at us has an elevation no matter what line of sight they were at. They probably saw us run, run to this tent. So we need to get out of this tent. We need to change our position. The longer we sit here, more vulnerable we become. Again, heartbeat, heartbeat. Uh, maybe some snipe shots. Oh, and a heartbeat. There it is. Heartbeat's a great tool. Nothing against it. But if you use it like this, you're better off using anything else. Now, here we are making our way into the building again, dude. Don't always... Bro. I love that. I love it. We'll let this fight continue. Two sets of footsteps, another in Are we burst firing? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, do we have a burst fire Marco in play? Let's go, all right. Now, after my subathon, I've been gone. I haven't played Warzone in a minute. Maybe that's the meta, but I highly doubt it. Look at this shit. All right, I went ahead and rewound it. A few things I wanna talk about. Um, we're ready to just cover the first one. So I'm gonna try to freeze it. So we, we, Where's our left hand at? Hand check. Where's it at? He, he's reached for his heartbeat, right? He hears the enemy inside and he's still gonna heartbeat it. But now he sees the enemy. Thankfully, he didn't whip it out. He canceled it and goes to ADS. But again, dude, the fact that he opens a door and his first instinct is the heartbeat while his back's exposed, while his sides are exposed, and, and obviously now his front, is just not a good strategy. Do not ever open a door and heartbeat the doorway you're about to enter. That is absolute insanity. So we need to move, we need to reposition, and we need to plate while doing so. Now, I wanna freeze it here because we can wrap around the building. We have multiple windows on every side. We can vault through, we can jump through. We've got buildings to our right, we got buildings to our left, we got buildings everywhere. We can play this fight, even though there's two enemies. He doesn't know it, but even though there's two, we can still play this building and, and use it to our advantage. But instead, he goes back to where he was at and it puts him in a bad position. The reason why going back is such a crucial thing is not just because of the enemy that you're fighting, but also because of the enemy on his team, they're gonna be going to your last minute position. If you just keep going back, it makes their job really, really easy. Player two has entered the game. Time to kill is massive, fire rate is massive. Do not use a burst gun like this. Okay, and now, now, if you're looking at this video, you know, a, a year from now, Warzone 2, you're just going back, watch Nostalgia, Warzone 1, you're like, burst guns are meta. At the time of this recording, fuck no. Don't do that. What the hell he was doing? Dude was drunk. Now, I'll be 100% real. I don't think the Marco has a burst setting. It might, he might've just been tap firing. Regardless, ridiculous. I'm moving on to King Crush. This is another situation too, where we're just kind of freezing here. Our teammate went down. We could have jumped out the window behind us, but instead we're sitting here holding the angle. Not really a huge fan of this at all. Still just holding it. Again, there's a reason why he has three kills. I'm not trying to be mean. We all have bad games, but if you're just gonna be holding angles, waiting for enemies to come for long periods of time, the difference between being patient and just being scared. This is way too much time. This is not just being patient at all. This is literally just being scared. They might push you, but you just want those easy ass kills. And to be honest, I think jumping out of your homie, trying to save him and getting that kill, that would have been way easier than this shit here. Not really sure what we're doing. Granted, that is a huge tactic we all use, right? You want to keep your body moving for sure. You're out in the open, you're vulnerable, but you're, I mean, 
if you doing this, you're you're changing your your body, but the window still has the line of sight on you. So does the staircase you're holding. Not really sure exactly what you're trying to weave right now, but hey, that's just me. There it is. All right, we know. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. All right, now this right here is a very dangerous for the enemy. Now look, you'll probably get beamed if you're in this position, right? You know the enemy's holding here. You're probably gonna get beamed from us regardless if you're holding this window like she is. So, so that's that's mistake number one. The biggest mistake of all is that their entire body is exposed 180 degrees around them that they're not even worried about. They can get shot in the back, they can get shot in the side, they get shot in so many areas. Again, still holding. Oh, weird, they got shot in the side. Oh, who'd have thought that? Damn, great smoke grenade. Not at all. And look, I'm glad to see King Crush going to the top because we have a lot of gunfight around us. We have a good vantage point. We can start getting some shots off. But instead, we're reloading with 108 rounds. What are we doing? Hey, King, bro, how much ammo do you need? Fam, bro, you've got people, look at, look at your mini map. You got a dot, it's kind of fading away, but you know there's a guy there. We know that somebody was also shooting at that chick over here. We have so, all you gotta do is just pick up, aim, and fire. You don't need these extra little bit of bullets. You got enough, but here we are. There you go, thank God, woo! Actually, 17 bullets, that's gonna be a game changer. And still not paying attention to who, why, again, why are we heart beating? Why? We, we saw the guy, we know there's guys on our left. What are we heart beating for? You already know, you have intel. Not too sure why they marked that. But okay. Again, dude, we're worried about this guy on green. We have gunshots going crazy next to our left-hand side, which we have a beautiful vantage point on. Beautiful. Now, look, a play you could do is instead of sitting here worrying about this, instead of, like, sitting right here and being worried about tower shooting you, just play the backside of the roof. Use the use the, the peak of the rooftop and play over here. That way, the tower can't shoot you or has a harder time to shoot you, I should say. But people do what people want to do. And the reason why this pisses me off is these guys have been playing for years. I know they have, but they still do the same shit. And they're wondering why they don't get better. And look, this is why I have the channel. We might go in, we might be a little uh, harsh, but again, constructive criticism goes a long way. Oh, struggling a little bit with the, uh, I say a little bit, struggling a lot with the snaps. Now the enemies that we ignored are now under us could could be a massive problem for your boy but we'll see to be fair though we're in a unique position this could go either way we'll cover this in a second hold up we'll wait you're a psychopath for that All right, so this is the position I was going to talk about. One, we, we only have one plate. We need more plates, but it's not a big deal. So the circle's going to shift somewhere. There's a 50% chance, maybe 40, but it's likely that circle's going to shift back to our direction, favoring the building we're in. Now, why do I think that? Well, if you look at the mini map real quick, it can't go to the right anymore because it's going to go out of bounds, and zones don't do that for the most part. It could go up to the north, which it might, and then we're kind of screwed. If it goes to the left, it could still favor a little bit of this building. If it comes back to us, of course, we're favored. So what I think he could do is just play the gas to the best of his ability. Granted, I'd like to see him jump off to this rooftop and, and get aggressive, but we see how he's playing. So for his play style, he could just play the rooftop and wait for the gas to come back because he's got the gas mask. The gas is going to move relatively quickly. This could be a play for him. Let's see what he does. Fully plated my, if, it looks like it's exactly what he's gonna do. Fully plating this position is, is a mistake if that's your play. Uh, and that is exactly what he's doing. He looks like he's gonna be waiting. Do not fully plate because as the circle comes back to you, we're gonna have to tank that for a while. And as we're tanking it, our plates are gonna crack and you want those plates for in game situation. Notice we're losing health, but we're losing plates faster. Not a big deal. Zone's moving in one second, we're fine. I think we'll have like half health by the time we're safe. But unfortunately, again, our play situation is going to be a little questionable. 
All right, we got a sliver and we got roughly a half health. So he's hyper focused on this one area, which is okay, I guess. But what I want to do if I'm playing the rooftop is un ADS. This right here is one of the biggest mistakes for players. This right here. Why is that? Well, as you're ADSing and just holding your ADS, especially in game when you just see people moving, I want to get eyes on people rotating out these buildings because they're going to have to, right? They're going to have to move. But if we're just ADS, it zooms in our FOV. It goes from like 80 to 60, from 120 to, I'm just throwing out numbers, but you get the drift. It zooms it in. We can't see as much. Stay out of your scope. Only be in your scope when you're actually looking for somebody you spotted moving. He might get lucky and find somebody. But again, dude, you want to get eyes on everybody going around you. We hear footsteps to our right-hand side. We hear doors closing. Four enemies left. They're fighting. They're shooting, and we don't even... We're not even phased. We're not even like, oh, shit, nothing. We're just frozen watching this buy station like it's our f***ing job. Not a bad play to keep around on the buy, but damn, it's a little, this is a little too much. Let's heartbeat it. Hell yeah. Oh, finally. Now, I don't want you to Savage, I told you. No, no. Watch the buy, but stay out of your scope, man. Come on. Unfortunate, but he'll probably die to the gas regardless. Deaf in the right play, jumping up here. You could make the AC jump and get to the rooftop. We got guys to our left-hand side. We need to do this quickly. There we go. Got the kill, made the jump. Very big mistake on the enemy that's running in the open not to shoot us in the back. I don't know why. They didn't look. They didn't hear us. They should have heard us parachute. So they should have been looking. But they weren't. We got lucky there. This guy, King Crush, you know, the mistakes he's making, he is in a position to win the game. Zone's moving out. We could tank this for a minute. Enemy below us to the right. Below us to the left now. Second floor, it seems like. All right, respect the wide rotation. We could hold the windows. All right, look. King Crush won the game, but he only won the game because those two guys killed each other, all right? That's the only reason why. We didn't get a kill since the buy station and everyone else kind of waxed each other. The Bounce and Betty. Guys, if you do enjoy the video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel today. But until next time, guys, man, y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone. Wolfpack, again, thank you guys for watching the video in its entirety. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given the channel over the past three years. Thank you guys so much for the constant growth and the constant laughs. Um, again, the purpose of this channel is not just to make people laugh and hopefully enjoy the spectating, but also to teach you guys to get better. If you guys would like some other videos related to this, make sure you click these videos over here. But until next time, man, y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone.